I'm just tw- 22. 20 t- no, I can't say that. It's, it's I, can say anyway, tw- I can say 20. Yo, so what did it? What's popping, everybody? Mr. J Hill Podcast. Another episode, another special episode live from the the high rise. Live from the high rise. That's where we at, right? Mm-hmm. We, we it looks nice. We got some sun. It ain't Yay. too much. We looking good. The guys is here. Pony Capri is in the building. Hi guys, what's All up? All the way from the UK, London mm-hmm. to be exact. Okay, I got to be careful. Um, <laughs> Facts. Before we even start this interview, starting the interview, can you give me some game? Like London, the UK. Tell me about it. Where do we even begin? How do we? It's so much to say. Like I don't know. Where do you want me to start? Um, what's the most? What's curious? Like what's on your mind? I don't, it's so much. It's like. First of all, you're not from Baltimore. I'm not from Baltimore. No, I'm saying, you know, I'm from Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say we have a UK accent sometimes. They say a couple words you say or sounds. I think it's O. Someone will say something to me. The two. When you when you was like 20, 22, I'm like, you sound like my yeah. sister or something. Yeah, they say the two sounds like that. Uh, where do I want to start with the UK? Um, what, what, what all makes up the UK, I guess? Okay. Take me to school. Yeah, because you know what's so crazy, right? I'll be like, yeah, I'm from London, and people think London's a whole country. Nah, it's a city, the capital city of England. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So UK is United Kingdom, so you've got Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and Wales. So four countries, because Ireland was split into two, Northern Ireland and Ireland, but Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Okay, okay. And England is England, the lower south part. London's the capital city of England. All right, so I was doing some research and I was like, uh, because you're an artist, mm-hmm. and I was looking at like top artists from the UK. Right. And I came across some, I'll be real careful because I'm, I'm just ignorant. I'm just be honest. <laughs> Let me just throw that out there, okay? So, I don't know what you're going to you say to me. I'm like, some what are you Ga- some, say? I, I ran across some Ghanese, Gan- is that, that's how you say it? Gan- from Ghana. Oh, Ghana. Ghanaian. Yeah. Ghana- or Ghanaian. Ghanaian, Ghanaian that's whatever. What say. Right. And I was like, so I'm like, wait, why did they come up? And then I found out that Ghana was actually a part of the UK mm-hmm. and it, it got its freedom in what, 1957 or yeah. something? I was like, look at me. Yeah, my dad's, my, my dad, my mom's from Ghana. Okay. And my parents met in the UK. It used so, to be a British colony. Y'all get a lot of people from, because it's not that far. It's, it's like. It's not that far. It's like six hours, same time zone. Sometimes it's an hour apart with the time zone. Wow. It's like literally below the UK, like a straight the, flight up. There's sometimes, does the music sometimes sound the same or? Nah, so what it is, because a lot of people, like black people from England are first generation immigrants or second generation immigrants, either our parents or our grandparents came from another country. So mine came from Jamaica and Ghana. Okay. My friends might come from Barbados and St. Lucia. Our next one might come from Jamaica or Trinidad, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Or Nigeria. Some, a few people, like their grandparents were born in the UK or their great-grandparents were born in the UK, but a lot of us are first or second generation immigrants. Wow. Yeah, I never... How is... That's what I wanted to know. Like, how is London, the UK... Well, I guess we could say the UK mm-hmm. compared to the United States. Like, the the, the culture. How is it? <laughs> Different. When you come to the United States, what do you think about <laughs> Americans? What's the first thing that, that comes to your mind? I ain't going to say for me, but what people tell me that America's mad... People are crazy in America. Mad. That's the first thing they say. Mad, yeah. So mad doesn't mean angry. It can mean that too, but we say mad is in crazy, okay. like insane. So a lot of British people, the first thing they think about America is they're insane, crazy, and they're egotistical or they care about money mm. and they're very dangerous. That's the first things, and materialistic. So that's the first things that come into people's minds about American people. Oh, I can, I can understand. And they all take drugs. <laughs> I can understand materialistic, for sure. <laughs> and they shoot everybody. <laughs> so when you came, what were some of the things that you saw that was true, that you actually, it wasn't, a, I don't want to say a stereotype, but something that you was like, I heard about this and I can see why. Oh, yeah, it's totally it all of it? true. It's, yeah, <laughs> but not everybody's like that, do you know what I mean? But it's definitely much more lawlessness. Like I feel like America was brought on that cowboy mentality, wild, wild west mentality. This was like a, conquering country take okay. everything pillage i want money i want wealth i want freedom from united kingdom for sure so for that sure. mentality is in the people still of i want i'm gonna get i want to be the boss i want to be on top that top dog mentality and it's there so how was it in uk then it's much more 
I'm not going to say communist, right? Because it's not a communist country, but everybody's kind of on a similar kind of level mm. and you all aspire to similar kind of stuff. Get a good job, buy a house, have two kids, get married, have two kids and a dog. You get what I'm saying? That's like the normal British culture. When you think outside of that, then you're like, ooh, what's this person doing? You know, it's crazy because isn't that what's supposed to be the American dream? I think like the American... Get married, have, have kids. It's supposed to be. Good job. That's the British dream. That's the British reality. I feel like Ed Sheeran said it best. He had this interview that he said, right? You know Ed Sheeran, the, singer, yeah, yeah, the British yeah. guy. So he said, boom, in America, you'll see a 70-year-old guy. You'll see a 70-year-old guy in a convertible car. He's got a hot model, young model, a 30-year-old, 25-year-old model next to him, top down. Right, and you come up to him like, "Yo, an American will come up to the guy and be like, oh my God, you made it! You got the fucking convertible car, you live on the hills in Hollywood, and you got this young model on your side, Spud. Like, touch, you made it in life." American will say that to him. A British person will be like, "You are disgusting. You're a dirty old man. Look at you flashing your money around with this young woman on your arm. You are shallow. You're materialistic. You're a disgusting disgrace." Wow. And that's the mentality. Okay, so I guess it's, it's, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, so personally, how do you feel about that? Because I, I'm listening to it, and for me, it's like, you know, okay, it sounds more so I'm content with what I have. Yeah, that's, the, that's how they want people to be. Content with what you've got. Don't think too big. And I think it keeps lawlessness out and greed out and keeps people more calm. So for mm. me, I've always been like an out of the box thinker. I've always wanted more than, I don't know, it's not a greed thing, it's just I want more. I want to experience life to the max and everything I can get. So having that mentality coming from England, people are like, yo, what's she doing? Why is she thinking like this? Why is she talking about that and this and getting that? And it's just different, do you get what I'm saying? Mm. So coming to America, it made sense to me because America is a great place if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to make extra money, if you really want to make something in life, this is a great place to do it. Okay. But I'm not saying that England's not like that, but it's it's catching up to that kind of thing. That's crazy. That's so, I, that's dope to, to know, because I always wanted to, to know, like, how does other people view us outside looking in, right. right? And then a lot of times, like, when I was coming up, I really didn't understand 9-11 until I started to speak to people that wasn't from here. Mm -hmm. And they was just saying, like, kind of, we did it to ourselves almost. I don't know about all that stuff. I mean, like, that's, that's what they say. I, I like, speak about what I know about, right, you know right. what I'm saying? I, I can't. Because, I mean, if you're that. so flashy, it's like, think about it. Things you have third world countries that, like, we're over there killing every day, mm -hmm. right? None of this stuff make the news. Mm -hmm. The moment, even not saying 9, 9 11 was huge, of course, but it could be the smallest thing that happens here mm -hmm. and it's all over national news, it's a big deal when. People are losing their lives every single day Yeah, about a large number in other countries. That's one thing that I noticed about when I came here to America. The news is very just American and local. Like your news doesn't show what's really going on in the world. Mm. So if you were in the UK, as soon as you turn the TV on, the, the whole world is like, whoa, that's what's happening right now. Wow. Like you're going to see the world different because they show different news. They show what's really going on. American news don't show that. They only show little bits of politics. Like Fox Network, is it what, Democratic? Or I can't remember what party they support. Fox, but they only show certain things about that party and what they're doing. But they don't show what's happening in the world. So people mm. are so ignorant to what's actually going on that you have no idea what's going on around America. I remember like being with American people. I had no disrespect to America because I love it's being here. That's why I'm here. Shit, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they'd be like, this person is the biggest artist in the world. I'm like, no, they're the biggest in America. You get it? Because it, it, it's an indoctrination of just what is here. So the news in England is so different. That's crazy. Damn. Is it any, is, is, is uh, the UK close to Ukraine at all? Mm -hmm. How Like how, how close is that? I don't know. Oh. So like that. <laughs> I know it ain't far. Oh, and I was asking, I was wondering if they like the war the Rus between Russia and Ukraine had any effect on. Yeah, it does on other people in um, Europe. Okay. You know, because other people in Europe are worried that um, if they sign certain treaties and stuff like that and join, what's it called? I can't remember what they we'll join. We'll have to go too it's just a lot of stuff. Fine. I'm just yeah. curious. I'd be wanting to Yeah, learn. some people are really, like, worried about stuff. Damn, that's crazy. So, question. Let's get into some of the fun stuff. I looked, like I said, I looked you up. There's a few things that I did see, but I, I don't know if it was true. Someone just throw some names out there. I want to know if it's right. <laughs> Were you married at one point? Where did you find that? Were you? Yeah. Like, 
<laughs> you look relatively young. Mm-hmm. Um, so wait, I, I how do like, I get married? Yeah, you know, like talk. You walk to, you meet somebody, you fall in love, you walk <laughs> down is, the aisle, say I'm you married, look and it's, you say I do, and that's how it happens. <laughs> was you married back home or no, you I got came married, here? I got married to an American. So. Was that I some like of that snatched thing? up quick. So that wasn't one of them like things we hear on TV. Like, you know, they say, don't you do, get don't married. Do that. Don't do that. Don't do you that. Get married don't so you, play me. Don't. Let's see. Look what he's man no, trying to do. Trying to set me up. I'm just saying. because Don't I, set me up, I'm, bro. Listen, I'm telling you. I'm ignorant. So, and I'm telling you I'm ignorant. And I'm going to speak because Sounds I don't like know. Sounds like a setup. No, it's not a setup. I feel like you. we hear these things as young kids. They be like, you want to come to another country, get married, and it's easier so you can get you your... You know that's very illegal, right? Illegal? Yeah. Oh, that's why you said I'm setting you up. You're you trying to set me up, but that's oh. not what happened. Oh, no, no. I wasn't trying to set you up. I just really didn't know. But that's not what happened, though. I okay. met somebody. Um, we fell for each other quickly. I got snatched up very quickly and got married. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I think oh, I got you. All right. Y'all fell in love. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Where did you find that shit out? Hey, it's the internet. The World Wide Web. Oh wow! So interesting. We want to. No, he was a producer. But, you know what I mean. We used to make music together and everything. What was his name? It doesn't matter. All right, my name. If is you somebody. know, if you know, you know. If innit? I, if I, oh, you're not doing so that. If I, if what I, the bomba class, <laughs> Aguan? If I name, if I name, is it tell me if it's right? Okay. Um, is it? Damn, I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it the non Porter? No. No. He's my people. So I'm my big brother. All right. Diesel Darius. No, he's not my big bro too. That's all I got. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he needs better investigation skills. Shit. No, damn. they're not my big bros. So, so Danan, so he's a producer for Shady Records. He produced a lot of Eminem's hits, 50s hits. He's my big brother. Darius Harrison, he was with Cash Money Records, produced Millie, a whole bunch of little Mrs. Officer, mm-hmm. big hits for them. My big bro too. They're both my big brothers. They're not. So you just sped on. We're going to skip the married shit. But you were <laughs> married at a point. It didn't work. So I get, we're going to give it to the, to the producers, right? Mm-hmm. You was married in the United States. Yes. Right? Coming from the UK, um, yeah, the UK, London. How was the love? Like, how, how, do, how are the men? Is, like, how, is it a difference? Yeah, it's different. But you know what happened? Like, fuck, as soon as I came to this country by myself, within two weeks, I met the man. What did you meet him at? I met him, so I was doing a, I came up here on holiday, right? On uh-huh. vacation, like doing music and stuff and promoting stuff. So I was doing some things with the coalition DJs. He was at the event working with one of the DJs. We were in the booth, we started talking and became friends. So when I was back in the UK and I came back, we linked up and we just, from the first day we met, we were together every day. How long did it last? Six years. Six years? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah? Did so, I do well? Yeah, you did well. <laughs> you did well. You did well. So wait, so, but how are you not, what's the difference, what's the biggest difference between a man in the UK and a man in the, uh, the States? I don't know. I ain't experienced enough American men to say that. I mean, you were married, so what's the biggest difference between? He was. <sighs> you know, talk I don't it. think I could speak on one man to reflect all American men. So you're telling me you didn't, you have an experience. You've been here for how long? You, a while. Clearly longer than six years. Not really, because the first year, the first three years, two and a half years, I was back and forth because I didn't have my paperwork. So I had to, you know, bounce every few months. But you've been to parties. Yeah. You've been to but events. But I was faithful to my husband. And so therefore. Okay. But what are the differences? Okay, I can tell you what some differences is what I see, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. America. You got Instagram, shit. Yeah, I have Instagram. Yeah, they do slide in the DM. I ain't going to lie. But... I ain't going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, American men like to spoil women more. They like to have this thing about taking care of a woman. Um, I see that. Do mm. you know what I mean? They feel comfortable and they, they understand that role. So British you men, with... some of them do. The ones that got mad bread do. Some of them do. But a lot of them, their mentality is, yo, you work, right? I work. You work, we can go Dutch 50-50. That's a very British mentality. And it's not a bad thing. Like, no one looks down on them. It's just the culture. So, you come to America, not you specifically, right? But you think of American men, they, they want to spoil women more, like you said. Yeah, naturally. Talk to me about, but I feel like it could be some shit that come with that, though. Yeah, I, of course. But I feel like it's all transactional here. America's a very transactional place. So you know what, what would you ra- what would you rather have? Would you rather the man want you to work, 
or you would rather the man want to spoil you but have some shit that he he wants from you I guess no I I want to work because I'm an entrepreneur by spirit like my whole mindset is based on work I like working Mm. not a job per se but like having my business and stuff so I wouldn't want anyone to take that away from me because I feel that's taking away my independence and the things that I love to do Mm. I love to make my own money but at the same time yeah hell yeah I want someone to spoil me Mm. and treat me nice and stuff but even if it comes with like I said even if it even if it comes with a little bit of extra um, expectation on the back What's end? What's the expectation? I don't know. Let's, let's well, have real. sex. People have sex with no money involved. What are you talking about? I mean, that's one <laughs> thing so far as ever. We just, saw, we just saw the viral video on Instagram. The guy flew the girl out mm-hmm. and she wasn't trying to give him no pussy. Right. And he took her back to the airport but and she recorded should've, it. She should have spoke about that. They should have had a conversation prior to see if they actually liked each other. For a start, I feel like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you don't meet, if you just met somebody, boom, within a week. I had guys hit me from my DM, let me fly you out. First fucking conversation, like, hey, what's up? Let me fly you here. Mm-hmm. If I'm dumb, I'd be like, okay, what are you expecting? You don't even know the guy. I don't know if you really like each other. What are you expecting to do? Just fly out and meet a stranger, come sit in his house. That's madness to me. Right, no, for a fact. I'm not saying what he did was right, but I'm just saying that's madness on the part of a woman to no, not, allow I- yourself to be put in that situation. I don't even think you said what he said, what you're saying what he did was right. Cause to me, I just feel like, first of all, recording it is not play. I just had this conversation with my, my bros and they kind of got on my ass. Cause I was being straight up. I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like, first of all, even if I did expect to get some pussy by flying you out, right? Mm-hmm. I'm play enough to tell you that. I, that's just me. I don't have to hide it. I don't have to, it don't have to come with no, it's, it's First of all, I'm in a relationship for four and a half years. You know what I'm saying? I love my girl. I'm just saying, hypothetically, if I was single, right. I feel like I'm player enough to be... It's so many girls in the world that I could tell you that I want to fuck you. And if you don't want to fuck, that I would just find somebody else that I want to fuck. I don't right. have to hide it. Right, you don't have to hide it. I'm going to trick you. That's, the, that's what I'm saying with the situation. They should have had certain conversations. If you're FaceTiming somebody, you're going to know if you like them or not. If you're not going to... Why are you flying across state to go see somebody that you're not really into? Mm. Like, I don't get it. Unless, obviously, you know, at first you think you're into each other, then you go over there and you're like, actually, I don't like this person. You're not obligated to fuck anybody. Nah, facts. No one's not obligated to do none of that. Oh, appreciate it. Yeah, so, nah, facts. I just feel like, I don't know, even if... Niggas, even in recording, it's just... Oh, niggas be it's corny. corny. Like, niggas, I'm sorry, like... Like, yeah, I but just, everything for the internet. Did you see that poor thing, that guy in Italy, the black guy that got beat to death by yeah. some random white man and everybody just stood there filming him? That's what the society is now. Just film people, don't help, don't get enough. So everything's about the phone. This is a moment now. I'm going to go viral. Bust out the phone. Yo, it's crazy how to, like, how to, what the world has come to. But like I was saying, back to our conversation. <laughs> do, you, do you rather a guy oh, wow. who's going to want to spoil you, but is going to come with some extra expectation okay i'm gonna spoil you but you gotta do this for me you gotta do this for me do you know how many guys that you just date and they don't spoil you they still want food they still want dinner cooked they still want the house clean they still want you to give them that was it that got got two thousand or was it the three thousand i think it right? might be three thousand yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Might okay oh you know it it's right. Be, yeah might be you see? Or something now. right and they ain't giving shit out mm. so you know what that sound like what it sounds. She said, "What?" <laughs> she was scared. But it's, it sounds like the saying, "I'd rather cry in a Rolls Royce." Yeah. Do you feel like that? No, like- I I do believe in real love. Mm. I don't believe in everything should be transactional. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in things being bought. Mm. Love being bought. I think you should like somebody if you want to be intimate with them. I don't think it should be bought. If it's something about being bought, then that sounds like a business, doesn't it? I I know what we call people in business about business of love, right? What do we call them? You know what we call them. I don't. Oh, uh, prostitutes. (laughs) Ah, I'm passing that test. Yeah. But anyway, so... uh, I think... (laughs) He's laughing over No, I'm going to be real. I think... um, might kill me for this. I'm still learning. Fuck y'all. I'm not scared of y'all. But whatever. I think it's nothing. I don't think it's nothing wrong with love being transactional. Okay. I'm gonna tell you why. Because I do want my love to be reciprocated, and I feel like reciprocation can be looked at as transactional, right? And what this we talk about love languages, right? Mm-hmm. So if your love language is X, Y, and Z, and I do A, B, C, you're not gonna feel my love, right? So reciprocation, being transactional, being intentional, I'm gonna give you X, Y, and Z, even though my love might be A, B, C, because if that makes sense, I hope I'm. Fu- that makes y'all sense, me. but you, 
but there's obviously some kind of emotional attachment or genuine likeness for the person. So that's not completely transactional. A transaction is like you go to Saks Fifth Avenue, mm-hmm. the person behind the counter says, that's $500, you give them money and they get the goods. But there's what? no emotion involved. There's Why no not, likeness though? involved. Why not? Because I'm only I'm only buying that $500 shirt or pants or a shoe because what? I like it. Yeah, but you like that thing. Right. that person that's so giving I, it to you. If I love that's you, what I'm trying to say. I'm going to treat you a certain way because... But that's not transactional. That's just being that's just being fair and giving and sharing and caring, just like you would with your family. Your mum needs something. You help her out. She helps you out. That's what you do with people you care about and you genuinely love. That's not transactional. My mum says to me, go to the store. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go to the store for my mum so she can give me $10 later to go to the movies. You don't do that unless you just... Okay, some kids, kids do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, some kids do. But, even, but it's not a tra- it's not purely transactional. You could do a lot of stuff just because you have love for that person and you want to please that person. They want to please you too. What about this though? Because I, I I feel you. Like I, I think we might be saying something similar. But you've been devil's advocate today. He, he's nah, putting nah, the, the it's spat not even in the devil's works. advocate. So you know what the golden rule is? Okay. Do you know what the golden rule is? No, I'm waiting. I, I believe the golden rule is treat others like they want to be treated. Okay. Facts. Right. So hypothetically, let's say I'm treating somebody well. I'm treating somebody good because I want to be treated good. Mm-hmm. That's a transaction. Because if let's say if I was just a fucked up individual okay. and I just treated you like shit, I had no moral, no moral compass, no ethics or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm treating people good because I want to be treated good. But and life I, doesn't work like that all the time. It doesn't. Not no, all the time, because for sure. you can treat somebody you think is so beautiful, give her the world, but in her heart or in his heart, the other way around, he'd be like, I don't like this person. Mm. I'm only being nice to them because they give me stuff. But I don't like their personality. I feel uncomfortable in their energy. I mm. feel uncomfortable in bed with them i'm in bed thinking about somebody else but because they are giving me xyz that's transactional you get what i'm saying and sadly some relationships are like that Mm. you know i don't want that so maybe i have to find a better word then because i do feel like that if if if, if i treat you with love respect or whatever i want the same thing i think that's just balance it's like you know do unto others as you want back done back to yourself and you want to have good people in your circle people who genuinely care about you and like you and you genuinely care about them and like them too Mm. but when things are like i don't give a fuck about this i'm just gonna get his money that's when you walk into traps no for sure i mean there's a lot of women out there like that but whatever let's talk about um (laughs) he's over that one now let's let's go into uh diesel (laughs) okay Cause one of the most interesting things that I saw, come on, man, you know, I used to, I had dreads growing up. Like I, everybody wanted to be Little Wayne. Mm-hmm. And I looked up your name and you had a song with Wayne? Yeah, I had a song with Wayne. How in the fuck? I'm assuming it came through Diesel. No, it no? didn't come through Diesel. What? Surprisingly. Talk, set the story It, it should have come through Diesel, but by the time I got to the studio with Wayne, he he left so whatever it came ironically i was in jay-z studio in new york working with one of his producers called ebase and i took a picture in the studio so weird let me tell you quickly so i took a picture in the studio with me and ebase and stuff posted it on my facebook and then tagged him you know when you tag people so one of ebase's friends because he worked on beyonce's album jay's album nazi's album all that shit and we was in jay's studio um this guy hit me up. He's like, yo, I see you tagged on eBay's thing and you in Jay's studio. I've got a song. Let me send you a bunch of records. I want you to get on a record with me. He sent me a whole bunch of beats. And on one of the beats, Wayne was on there. I was like, yeah, I want that one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's literally how it happened. And then Wayne put it on his project. Was that the was that the power of like the mixtape back in the day, I guess? Yeah. Because would you, you would you think that would ever, could that even happen nowadays? Yeah, of course it can. It could? Yeah, yeah. of course it can. Because Wayne approved it. Like I sent it oh, to so him. Oh, so he approved it. Yeah, he put it, he released it. Wayne released it. And I didn't even know Wayne released it. So I submitted the song. I did the song, submitted it to him. And then my DJ back in England, I actually remember this day. Um, Cause I remember when I was walking, I was in a place called Rumford walking and my DJ hit me up. He's like, yo pony, I just got your record with Wayne. I'm like, the song's released. He's like, yeah. They just sent it to me, like, you know, the DJ pools that they get with it. You send all the DJ. I didn't even know they released the song. So, did you see any, like, um, money? Signi- both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see any money? No. I got a lot of streams. I know a lot of people got the songs on. The what song was it again? Actually, it's called Easy Money. How does it go? It's old. It's really yeah, old. Yeah, it's um, Ease to it, man. I do it with my black shades on. 
Close to my yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. I thought you were going to set this. Come on, set the song nah, up. It's easy money. It's a good song, though. Right, we're we're it up. Easy money. I think I remember. Uh, it was like Wayne had the short dress then, I think. Yeah. he And it was like, he was going through like a rock stage. So it was like really heavy guitars and bass. And it was different. So you didn't meet him personally? No, but we know of each other. That's hard. Yeah. That's fire. I mean, come I've had on an now. interesting life. Everybody, I mean, everybody <laughs> now on a song with Wayne. Like, I know, act I know. like it's, you. A, it's a blessing. Like, this is my life, isn't it? So I'm just, this is my life. So talk to me about uh, Diesel and even Denon. Am I saying it right? Yeah, Denon Porter. Because, come on. Like, you're sitting here like, you come in here like you, you you regular or you normal or something. You're not that. It's just I'm just looking at it and I'm it's just so like. It's so funny. You're the second person that told me that. The guy yesterday, I was at, had a session yesterday. He's like, yo, like you lit. You've done so much stuff. I'm like, yeah, but this is just my life. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, when it's, me. No, but when it's your life, you don't think like, oh, shit. I'm, some people are egotistical. Yeah, I'm the shit. Da, 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 da. I don't walk around like that. Like everybody has to shit. Everybody has to eat. You have one bed you can sleep in a day. You get what I'm saying? Everybody gone born. Everybody gone die. Mm. Like what the fuck? I'm not, I'm not dismissing my accomplishments. I appreciate every blessing that God has given me. You get what I mean? I love the people that God's blessed me to be around. Like people who are iconic, who sold millions and millions of records, who are, you know, lifetime achievers. I'm blessed to have them and call them my big bros. And we'd be talking, be like, yo, ask for advice and shit. They'll call my son and tell my son good night and whatever. They're family to me now. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So I'm blessed to have that. But we all people. <laughs> I mean, shit. Besides Wayne, did you did you work with anybody? Like, who are some other like stars? Because we want to know. Okay, so you know, so obviously Mr. Porter, huge, done tons of plats and stuff. Um, Giggs, Giggs is one of the biggest rappers in the UK. Giggs is he, he does crazy. stuff with like Drake and stuff now. So before we used to we called it my mum's house in the UK. You and Giggs. Yeah. Wait, how the fuck did this happen? Like. <laughs> like <laughs> Did you have any crazy stories with him? Yeah. What's the craziest stories that happened with Giggs? Oh, Lord. I went to, I remember when Giggs was in jail. So I used to go visit him in jail. She was a girl or something? In jail, in prison. No, I wasn't his girl. But we was in the same, we had the same crew, if you call it that. Crew? Yeah. What, you was in a gang? We had the same crew. <laughs> 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 Wait, tell me about this. Like, did, did the crew, we were the same crew. Did the crew wear colors? <laughs> I'm just saying, like the, the crew had chains that had the same fucking sign. You oh, get yeah, me? I had chains and shit when the crew. Like, He's all the, funny. What the fuck is going on in the UK? I mean, I know. I know. <laughs> so he was in jail. So I used to go visit him in jail with my, with, um, you know, other people. That's not like no, nah, you got no, 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 no. Set the story out. You, you said <laughs> I asked you, have you had any crazy stories with gigs? And you laughed and you say yes. Yeah. So, so like, I remember it was not really that crazy. Just that one. So I used to go see gigs and went to see gigs in jail, and then he went with me to go see another friend in jail as well one time. How did he get locked up? Gigs gun charge. Damn. Yeah. Sheesh. Firearms. Sheesh. Yeah. That's crazy. UK got a a big um drill scene now mm, huge it's actually really popping now like people are getting money from this scene did you cross across europe africa would you say uk started drill 100 percent. 100 percent not yes 100%, no yes. how not because i don't think oh, he's going like, like this chicago drill doesn't sound like uk drill so okay for sure but so it, i'm not gonna say that i don't think they're the same kind of drill music I think they might have the same subject matter, but I don't think it's the same kind of drill. So if it's a if it's a type of drill music, then they can't start it. They... Ian, I still think so because this is, maybe I'm ignorant to this shit. But the way I, <laughs> no, but the way I see it, I like Pop that. Smoke came and he put New York drill on the map, right? New York drill. He was getting producers from the UK. He came, he listened to the UK sound that was doing drill music. He's like, "Yo, I like this shit." He took British producers. That guy that's popping in the UK did his New York shit on it, right? People are like, yo, this is hard. I like this. And then boom, and a whole nother wave started. And this is like, what, four or five years ago we talked no, about. No, for sure. But we was doing that. For sure. New York drill sounds a lot like UK drill. Because they sure. take British production as a whole. But to say, I feel like Chicago came before UK. I feel like Chief Keith yeah. was, what, 2012? But that wasn't cool drill though, was it? 
it wasn't called was it called drill yeah, was chicago yeah. drill called drill yeah. when, well then maybe chicago drill but i don't think chicago drill sounds the same as it doesn't no, you're right. no, no you're right i think that's just their own style so so you like do you listen to um uk drill at all a little bit mm. yeah they, they've been in a, lot, in a lot of uh trouble because of that down there right well when it first really came out a lot of people just wore ski masks they didn't show their faces on the videos I heard like I don't know the names, but I was uh, just passing. It was like two artists that like they kind of like got banned or some shit. Like it, it's 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 really bad out there, supposedly banned. Like yeah, like I don't know. What you don't know what that mean? Banned from what? Like I don't know. Like I don't. I don't even know. What, I got clubs, venues. No, performing? like I don't want to say the governor because I don't know what y'all call it out there. But mm-hmm. y'all state y'all officials was um like put out something that they couldn't even uh wasn't supposed to make music or something. Or it was upload bad. their music Yeah, and stuff. it was bad. Because I think they really be banging and talking about what they do. That's why, as I said, when it first came out, they had ski mask on. Like, no one would show their face. Is it that bad in the UK? It can be, yeah. But you said everybody is, like, on the same level. Why, yeah, why because, you was in this, this crew because, with these... Because if everyone's on the same level, right, it's hard to elevate, isn't it? Do you get what I'm saying? So you're in a rat race and you're bored and you're chasing the circle. Mm. And a lot of people get trapped in their hoods. Like, we have hoods. We have projects. You mm. get what I'm saying? Like New York. If you see New York, how it's built up with the projects. And we have the same system. So people get trapped and they can't see a way out. So it becomes a way of life. Damn. So what made you get in the crew that you was in? They were my you friends. see, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying they're to figure out who friends. you are. Like, you gotta let me know. You ain't telling me who you is. I know you got these. New... They're, they're my friends. Like, what do you mean? Mm. <laughs> I mean, some people don't go in a crew. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't in a a crew with chains with the same sign. I was okay. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I wasn't. Like, <laughs> no, it wasn't like. So, I was dating Giggs's best friend for a number of years. Giggs' best friend. Yeah. Okay. At a time for a number of years, so that's why we was all like together. So was he always like, you could always see that he was going to be big when you was back, even back then? I always told him he was talented. I always told him, yo, your music is fucking amazing. Like, you really going to make it. I always told him that. Mm, like, I fucked with him before he became who he is. That's crazy. That's fire. I, that's, that's dope. So how is it now? Like, I mean, you, we in the States, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you pushing forward. I see you got the Bel Air thing. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how would you say your career is going? I feel happy. I feel content, right? Making new music, putting new songs out. Like, I feel good about my career and where I'm at. Is that just a safe answer? Like, how do you That's... feel? When you lay down at night by yourself, let me paint a picture. Let me paint a picture. Paint yeah. This picture. You go out, you had drinks with your friends, y'all had fun. You come in the house, you drunk. Mm-hmm. You go to lay down, mm-hmm. you by yourself. Mm-hmm. The TV is off. Mm-hmm. It's dark, mm-hmm. pitch black. <laughs> and you had a thought in your mind like, back home, family, yeah, career, finances. What be going through your minds at at those at those times? Okay, so I'll miss my family. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you know it's real love around you, but I don't want to go back to England and live that life. Mm. When I look around, I feel really grateful. I feel really appreciative. I'm like, shit, I created all this. Even though I'm alone, because that's how essentially I am. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm the only one that came out here. Mm-hmm. Um, so that gets to me a little bit, being alone. But at the same time, I'm like, shit, I created something. Do you ever um, look at the people around you? Because we're in Atlanta or whatever. Mm-hmm. And be like, man, this shit isn't real. Like, these people are fake. Oh, yeah, all the time, every day. I keep myself to myself. Like, I don't fuck with a lot of people. That not because I don't like them. It's just because I don't like no pasta pasta thing. I don't like mix up. I don't like being mixed up in the mix. Because I feel like the more people you're around constantly, the more shit you can get into and the more things can happen. So mm. I like to keep myself very... Grounded. Very grounded, very one-to-one intimate relationships with a few select people. Like, I know a lot of people, a lot of people know me, but I don't like to get in the mix of too much stuff. How often are you thinking about these relationships and missing back home, though, and missing your family? Because that could be frustrating. It's not frustrating, because I don't want to live back there. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Was it that bad? Like, when you say I don't want it, like, why not? Why, was it that bad that you... No, 
it's not that bad. It just depends what you want out of life, you know? I feel like, like one of my homegirls hit me up yesterday. She's like, yo, um, it's a lot more money in America, isn't it? She's like, is it easier to make money? I'm like, yeah, it's a lot easier. If you're smart, you can make a lot of money here. And she's like, damn. Because I know a lot of really smart people in England, like extremely intelligent people, mm -hmm. but there's a cap on your earnings. Mm. As I said, now with social media, with online companies, you can do stuff, you can expand. It's growing, people becoming more entrepreneurs. But at the start, it's been, we're behind America in terms of that. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah. entrepreneurial stuff. So, hell no, I don't want to go back there. Now, I always ask people, like, how they feel. Because, you know, when the last time somebody asks you, how, to, not what's up, how you feeling? It's different between Yesterday, how you I had this same conversation yesterday with another artist. And I told him, like... As an artist, you go through stages, yeah? God, please, I want to make, like, a stage of love, passion, optimism. I want to write bars. I'm going to be the biggest fucking star in the world. Boom, boom, boom. And then something happens and it knocks you down. You're like, oh, God, please help me. I really want to make it. I want to be a, a big star. Why isn't this person signing me? Why did that contract go bad? I had that session. Why did this person treat me like that? You go through all that hurt, right? Because there's a lot of fuckery that happens. Sorry, I curse a lot. I hope I don't bother you guys. But no, you're good. there's a lot of fuckery that happens in the industry. You get what, you know what I'm saying? And then the next stage could either be boom you go into a place of sadness feeling like i failed in life i didn't really make it that's why a lot of artists give up on their dreams become mediocre and just settle or you get to a place of like you know what i'm content i'm happy with who i am i'm happy with what i've got in my life like i do other stuff i do music because i love music and it's I'm, i can't get it out of me i played instruments from the age of four but i'm happy with who i am as a person mm. So let me ask you this, were, were those the stages, because you just mentioned three stages, were, mm -hmm. these, were, were those the stages that you went through? Yeah, 100%. And that's what I want to know about that stage in the middle. Like when you said, like you go through stages and it's times where you just want to give up and it's like, yeah, man. Yeah, you feel mad depressed. How did you get through those those stages? That this, that depressed stage. And tell me, can you tell me I'm a story when you were depressed and what, what got you to that depression and what got you through it? Shiesty people. Um, having like contracts come, contracts go, they build it up. Yeah, we got you, we got you, got you, boom. When? Takes away. What contract went bad? What, and what <laughs> situation? I want to know the story, the so detail. So many times, so many times I had a lot of opportunities that came by me that I thought were good. Like, I'm just going to be real. I just thought this was going to work and it never worked. And then I had situations when guys would be like, I got you, I invested in this, I'm going to invest in you. But really, you're just a sleazeball that just wants to use you as a sexual toy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to fall into that. Or they give you a disgusting contract that's going to get you tied in for life and you're going to end up in debt if you sign that contract. Damn. And you'd be like, yo, why are people really that bad and that evil that they just want to just break you down? You get what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people who are sharks. Like, they prey on your hunger. Okay, they really want to make it. Let me see what I can do. Like, they come in with a whole different intention. And I think that's probably, like, one of the things you touched on earlier, right? We talk about um, the U.S. and we talk about this sense of greed. It's greed, And, and yeah, the fact facts. that you can just put yourself in your greediness above another human being, like you said, right? Mm -hmm. You have a contract and it's like you want to intentionally fuck somebody over just... Praying to get lucky that somebody just signed and don't read it. You're mm -hmm. praying on somebody else's life mm -hmm. almost, right? I had this guy, right? He told me, I, I I flew to New York. He's here in Atlanta. This man lives in a fucking $3 million mansion. He's got two Rolls Royces. He's got a Ferrari. he got whatever fucking car you want, yeah? Man's got money. Tell me, I've got a deal for you, Pony. I've got this deal. I want you to sign this contract. Send me this contract. He's like, I'm in New York right now. I'm sitting right now with the head of Atlantic Records. He told me the name. Boy, I'm sitting with this person right now. I had a meeting with him all weekend. We've got this contract for you. It's $2 million contract. You just got to sign this management deal with me. It's X amount. Da, 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 da. Don't know that I'm really in the fucking industry, right? And I know people in this industry. So I played the lawyer of bands. Mm -hmm. This top lawyer in the industry, thank you, Tim. I paid him bands to go check this, this deal for me out. He didn't know, he thinks I'm some little girl from London that could come talk shit to me, you understand? Didn't know that I know people that can go and call the fucking head of Atlantic Records and say him an email, and the head of Atlantic Records will send an email back and be like, boom, this is what's going on. Mm. You get it? And if I was a dickhead, I would have signed that contract and got tied into debt and lies and deceit. How would you get tired? How do you get tired into debt with that contract? Um... <sighs> He was, he would have just raped me financially, bottom line. 
What does that look like? It's so many. I feel like so many young. <laughs> we got now. We got. Listen, listen so you gotta, bottom line, yeah. Read. It doesn't matter if it's twenty pages long. Read the paperwork. Go get um, advice from somebody and older. Read everything. Don't take people's word for it because somebody's driving a Rolls Royce and they say they got you and they're sitting here in this office. It's all cap. Like people really be capping for whatever purpose. Some of it's just a power move. Yeah, niggas be capping. Some of it's just power. They just want to have power over somebody because they're evil. We was. I was watching. The, um, like million, for real. I was watching the Million Dollar Worth of Game. Speaking of uh, drill music, right in New York, drill music. Um, Five Year Four was on there and he was saying how Mace gave him five thousand dollars for a deal. Fast forward really quick. Mace got back on that. He said that he gave him five thousand dollars so he can control the deal, so he wouldn't fuck him over. And he ended up giving him a deal for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They split the deal 50-50 mm. or whatever like that. So I feel like some situations can benefit you, even if it's if it doesn't look good in the, in the beginning, as long as it's a way that you can get out of it and win. Right. For example, I think I don't know. I just I don't know. I, me personally, I think my situation wasn't like that. Nah, I'm Mine sure. Mine was a trap. <laughs> now, I believe you. I'm saying when we talk about these deals, I thought it was a great segue to talk about these deals because I feel like me personally, I would love to be signed to a huge network and I don't know, somebody just come pick me up and, and put me on this big platform. But at the end of the day, I think I'm not, I would say that I'm, I'm, I'm throughout the, the struggles of this shit because it is hard. The independent life is good because at the end of the day, if I keep doing this 20 years down the line, this is this is going to be worth something. So it's not about right now. Like right now, it's hard. Yeah, shit go on. But tw I'm looking 20 years down the line, it's going to be something that's going to be on television and it's going to be making me a lot of money. And I feel like a lot of companies do that. McDonald's, think about it. Mm -hmm. Fucking, uh, I don't know. I'm looking at PetSmart. Like, Taco Bell. Taco yeah, Bell. I know because what, what happened is we think, and it, not to be rapping, but I'm passionate with, this is something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. You think about, these companies, we talk about the uh, support black businesses, right? And people right. say, you you won't go into Saks Fifth or Nordstrom's and ask them, why is this so high? But they built that. Balenciaga had a, they, 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 they that's not just a, a brand that's been around for since yesterday. No, it's a big, they've been building this stuff. Forever. Mm -hmm. So, I, man, I don't know. We can, like I said, I don't want to, because I can, <laughs> I get pat, like that's, that's something that I, like my but friends, that's what I'm, I'm saying 100%. As, that's what I'm saying as well, though. One of the things, you got to have passion, you got to love what you do. Like Oprah said, you got to be obsessed by what you do, obsessed with it, love it to, to the heart, to the core, wake up thinking about it. Mm. But don't think about having somebody save you. you got to save yourself. <sighs> Ooh. You know? Damn, that's a fact. That's some real shit, man. Damn. That's crazy. And I really believe there's some good people in the industry. I'm not, I don't even think there's all bad. I just got to be aware of it because there's so much money going around. That's when you get greed. Mm. And that's when you're going to get people that just want to prey on weaknesses of people. So, question. So, I mean, because you said you had a, uh, you was married to somebody that was in the industry. How did up that up and coming? Up and coming. coming. Yeah. How did that relationship go south? <laughs> um, I think bottom line, we're just two very different people. What does that mean? No. Yeah. You can't give me surface level answers. Like, no, you're not gonna get <laughs> it, but get by with that. But that's what it is. I feel like. All right, boom. You have a group of friends, yeah? There mm -hmm. might be six of you that grew up together. Mm -hmm. But two of you get on better than the others. But imagine if you ended up becoming besties with the other one, but they really annoy you deep down. But you love them, but they're really annoying. Yeah, yeah. But sure. they're not really as cool as you are with that one because that one, just their personality matches your personality more. But now you're stuck with this friend who's a fucking annoying. They're great, but they're really <laughs> annoying. <laughs> and they're not really on the same wavelength as you. Right. Sometimes people get married to people like that. Mm. And then you end up just knocking heads because you've seen the world so differently. But because you've got love for each other, what, you're going to just stay together? But it's different if you're friends because you don't have to live in the same house. You can be like, all right, see you next week. Facts. Because <laughs> I saw, no, I saw that, that it, it wasn't like the best breakup. What the f Who have you been talking to? <laughs> Nobody. I just <laughs> just look around a little bit. That's it. <laughs> I was curious. Now I was curious. Yeah, when it, you go, it wasn't the best breakup. When you when you go through bad breakups, like how does best. how does that affect your love life moving forward? Like how do you not be upset and angry at every last dude that come every, your way? Any man that reminds me of him, I will run. Mm. Anyone that has a, a trait of him, I will run. That would affect me. Yeah. So is it? Did, so did you really heal from that then? I healed, but I feel like 
I don't want to, I know what I don't want. Mm. And no disrespect to you, like if you're watching and stuff, I just think we're very two different people. And I told you as well, I said to you, go find somebody else who's a better fit for you. You get what I'm saying? Like there's going to be somebody who's perfect for him. Yo, how angry or how, not even angry, how hurt you got to be to tell somebody, yo, like, I'm done. Just find somebody that's good for you. It ain't me. I, like, think, how, like, I don't think that's her. I think that's real love. Like, you just got to be real in life. Some people just stay in stuff that they're not really happy because they made a commitment and they want something to work because of history or because they love a person. But love doesn't mean that you're going to be genuinely happy. I'm sure you got family members, maybe you, but you know, family members that you love them, but they're really annoying and they they irritate the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why are you acting like that? We don't even think the same, but you got the same uncle or the same grandparents or the same mother but they're mad annoying. It doesn't mean that you have to go live with them now and do a business with them and stay with them every single day, does it? No, for sure. I think trauma happens in, in, in a lot of ways, you know, and just being transparent as I am, I feel like a lot of those traumas come from the first person you meet in life. But your parents. Your parents. Yeah, And I think facts. a lot of that shit trickle down because a lot of times, like, you know, man, we ain't come from a lot as African-Americans. So our parents and their parents ain't really know as much as we know, mm -hmm. right? So like I That's just true. I just feel like because of course we're supposed to uh, grow as a as a generation as as the years go on. That's one reason I say that not to mm -hmm. be disrespectful, but I say that to say, you know, it's been times where I had to tell my mom's like, bro, this is not going to work. When I I didn't know how to do that before, you right. know, like this is my I have boundaries and you can't cross this line, right? And I feel like a lot of times, b because of our history as African Americans, we don't know how to do that with our parents. So when we in relationships, we, we don't know how to do that in a relationship. And sometimes people could continue to cross our boundaries until we can't have enough. And then we find ourselves in places that we shouldn't even be in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I talked, to, was it on the whole time? Should no, it was on. It was? It on. was? Mm -hmm. So how did that come off? It just literally just popped. You sure? I hope so. I'm a stickler. I fucking hate that. Whatever. But yeah, yeah man. Um, so I, I'm, I feel like a lot of that is like self-reflection. I know it sounds like what is self-reflection, but like looking at your situation with fresh eyes and be like, yo, my childhood was fucked up. This is probably why I do this or that or that or that. Mm. And sometimes it might not even be a fucked up situation, but a couple little things that happened in your childhood growing up has scarred you deeply. That's why you act a certain way towards a certain type of person mm. or do a certain kind of thing. And a lot of people don't look back and reflect or heal because I don't know about your culture, but in my culture, counseling, black people, we don't go counseling. We don't need to talk to no You know that's therapy. in my culture too. You oh. know that. You know that. <laughs> but we don't go to counseling. We don't have to talk to no therapists. Why are we doing that? So, so many of us are, are scarred. And that passes through generations of scarring, scarring, scarring. No cap. Nah, for real. I think you know? um, I think in today's, we're, we're doing better, though. I feel, I like, feel like we are. We're, we're, I was going to therapy. Shit, I want to go back to therapy. I think mm -hmm. it does a great job for even my, my when I'm speaking to other people, to right. be honest. Because I can learn how to, to tap into their situations and, and, and learn how what they've been through. Because a lot of times, people don't even, people go through so much, but they don't know how to express it out. And I, I really want my platform to be somewhere where people can express how they feel and they can get, get, get things off their chest but not even vent, but really understand the shit they've been through instead mm -hmm. of being angry at it, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's why I ask you all these questions. It's, it's healing, isn't it? Like, not to be angry about it. Mm. I feel anger is blame. When you don't blame yourself and you don't blame the other person and come to a place of just understanding, which is just part of life, we're going to go through certain things and we have to heal from it. That's when you become, you just let go of that burden. But when you've got blame, even if you're blaming yourself, it's a problem. So if anger you know? is blame... What is the opposite of anger? What is happiness? Peace. Mm. Just understanding, like, contentment and gratitude. Grateful for where you are right now. Even if something's a bit rocky and or bills have got to be paid or da-da-da-da-da, you're still alive, right? Mm. You had bills that had to be paid last year, last month. You were stuck last month, but you made it through, right? For sure. You get what I'm saying? You still made it. 100%. Damn. I like that. So the music you got going on, like how, how do we, like what what's new? What's new? What, what? So I just dropped um, my single Top, sponsored by Bel Air, which is how we shoot up the video in New York City, which is dope, you know, a lot of liquor. And they sponsored you? That, yeah, they sponsored me, they still do. That's fire. Still do a lot of stuff they with them. They still be sending you packages and shit? Mm, of course. Oh, they cut my shit off. Oh man. Nah, I just gotta reach out to them, they sending me something. When did they cut it off? I don't know. Maybe about a month ago. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they cut it off. I think they're just going through some kind of um, yeah. stuff. But I call them and they send it, so whatever. Yeah, it's not being So I'm grateful. Cut off. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank y'all. <laughs> Shout out, I'm sorry I don't have anything on the uh, Yeah, because you was at the party. Yeah, that's what yeah. we met. No, we, no, we didn't meet there. We met at Boosie's house. We met at Boosie's house, and then... But it was at Rick Rossi's house. I saw you at the party. We Yeah, we didn't meet there, but, but I saw you there. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. How is it? Like, how do you... like? Think about it, bro. We 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 living in we having so much shit we couldn't even think of about. Honestly, I bet you when you was back home in the UK, you could you see yourself here just living the life you're living. Fuck yeah! I pictured this shit. No, no cap. <laughs> I told him. I, t- I imagined this life. I told Seven. I said, "Yo, they gonna ask me <laughs> when I get famous and rich." Yeah. They're like, "Yo, could you ever expect you would have been here, nigga? What? I dreamed about I it every day. Every day, every day. I was like, yo, this is." <laughs> so so a better question. Is it what you expected? Is is it what you thought it was going to be, so far? Um, it's interesting actually. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent where I'm going to be yet. Obviously, of course, yeah, do you get what I'm saying? But yeah. I'm definitely on the ladder of where I want to be. It's good because you don't even realize that you're there mm. until other people tell you you're there. That's one thing I noticed. Yeah. But your work sometimes too. Like, think about it. Nobody don't have to tell you that you're almost there and your video is sponsored by Bel Air. Okay, yeah, that's true. But, okay, I tell you what it's for me. When I wake up, I'm on the 24th floor and I look out on the sea and I'm like, shh. Talk heavy. Heavy you, talk. Right you, you say you, what floor are you on? 24th floor. <laughs> 24. But I look, I look out and I'm like, yo, I see the whole city here. Like, this is not where I came from. The world is in my hands, baby. You understand what I'm saying? I thought I was doing something. I'm sorry. She said, "Oh no, it was baby, still nice. I'm higher than this. <laughs> I'm higher than this." Nice you, but oh. no, <laughs> you joke. You got jokes. No. But no, for real. When I see things like that, I'll be like, "Yeah, shit, I'm doing something for sure." But you are, yeah. Um, I'm grateful. So does it? Does that? And this is something I ask people all the time. Does that get frustrating? Right? The not being there, but now is in your vision. Now is in your sight. But it's like. You're not there yet. No, nah, no, nah, it doesn't get frustrating. Does no, nah, shall I tell you why? For me, shall I tell you why I don't get frustrating? So I've been doing this music my whole life. The first time I was on TV, I was 16 years old, right? I was rapping, was on stage TV, 16. Magazines at 16, 17. Boom. I was around a lot of wealth. Not from my wealth. I was still 16 years old. I had no money. But I was around people who were making bank mm. because they were deep in the industry. They were making big fucking checks. And then I'll be out with them. They'll be like, just come and come on my tour with me. And I'll be living five-star life. Lobster, steak, pony, what do you want? I've always been like little sis. What do you want, pony? I want this. Okay, champagne. She used to this. Like crazy <laughs> shit, right? Chauffeurs driving me around New York. Best hotels, five-star hotels when I was young. And then I come home at my mom's crib or in my little flat and I'll be like, Fuck. Like, <laughs> fuck now you come right? home to your own to your penthouse <laughs> but now it's different because okay. i come home to the 24th floor okay but at them times i came home to like you know the room the little room like, yo, okay this is, this is too big a discrepancy the difference is too big like i love that mentality because i'm not gonna lie for me it's hella frustrating being almost there like they say yo you want away you want away and sometimes you get to count on that one and you counting and you counting and then that fucks you up. Nah, because you're not appreciating that you're already in there. So what happened to me? Talk to you, me. You give me right. Give already, me right. You don't know. You're not appreciating that you're already in there. You're already in it now. Mm. You just gotta keep going. Facts. That's all it is. If you stop, then there's potential that somebody else will come and be like, I'm gonna copy what Mr. J Hill did. His model, and then he gone. You know, or she's gonna. But if you carry on, you can only go up as long as you keep your mind right. For sure. Hundred percent. I think th- that's. I think that is the key to success, right? We say consistency, but it's 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 not just consistency anymore, right? It's, it's, it's always leveling up. I feel like I heard Lil Wayne say this, and this is one of the best advice I've ever heard. He didn't even tell me this to my face. He was like, "Bro, the way I made it was I'm always going, seeing how I can top, how I can top myself, how I can be my best self each day. Mm. That's the key to I success. I love that. 
right? It's, it's not just consistency anymore. Because I could be consistency, consistently bullshit. <laughs> it ain't going to go nowhere. Consistently trash. <laughs> just consistently <laughs> piece of shit. Like, it ain't getting nowhere. Consistently I gotta, mediocre. I gotta, right. I got to consistently <laughs> be better than what I was yeah, yesterday. Yeah. So, no, I think you're right. I, and I appreciate that. And, um... Shit, I'm always open to learn and, and, and have somebody tell me about myself. It's cool. I'm going to be on the 24th floor soon. Soon come. I'm <laughs> on the 50th floor. <laughs> nah, but um, what else? You got the music coming. Mm -hmm. uh, you got anything else? I thought you had the lingerie. You oh, going? that was, I was just playing with y'all. I think about stuff. I think about so many different business ideas all the time. So I just throw it out there and see. I do real estate. If you want to buy a house or sell a house or flip a house, come to me. Sheesh. Okay. You know? Well, Pony Capri, everybody, I appreciate the sit down. Thank you. Um, it was a great conversation, man. I, I love these conversations. Hopefully, we won't have another conversation when we further up there. Yeah. It's going to mean more, man. Let's do it. I like it. Consistency, right? Leveling up every day. Relentless consistency. Pony Capri, Mr. J Hill is a rap. I don't got nothing else to say.